Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Yes, our God is real. Our God is true. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Yahweh El Olam is also the self-existing God. Yahweh yeah, he is self-existing. So we thank Him for giving us life, giving us health to come to this place. And may He reward everybody who sets time to come to hear His word. That He may go and do according to the word of Yahweh, the Lord our God. Today, we are continuing with in the series, Understanding the Ways of God and Walking in the Ways of God. And uh, we, as usual, we'll start by just focusing, recapping on what it is without repeating the past. And this is found in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. And it says, Now Israel, what does Yahweh your God require of you but to fear Yahweh your God and to walk in all his ways, to love him and to serve Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul, to keep Yahweh's commandments and statutes which I command you today for your good. So this is the, the basis of the walk uh, the walks we've been talking about, walking in the ways of God. And we also know from Ephesians 2.10 that we're also supposed to walk in the paths that God set for us, doing the works that He preordained for us to do because we are recreated in Christ. We are God's workmanship in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior or we've been recreated in Christ Jesus our Lord. So today... We are looking at another aspect of the walks with God. And today it's walking in the fear of God, in the fear of Yahweh. In fact, the way Deuteronomy 10, 12 starts is now Israel, what does Yahweh your God require of you? But to fear Yahweh your God. And we've talked about the fear of God before. And... Uh, I will not, I will try not to repeat what we've said before. Today, I want us to look at how to walk in the fear of Yahweh, in the fear of God. And we'll start by asking why. Why should we walk in the fear of Yahweh or in the fear of God? And I'll ask somebody to read uh, Somebody to open Psalm 128, verse 1. Somebody else, if we can have three people. Somebody else to open Psalm 25, verse 14. And somebody else, Psalm 103, verse 17 to 18. So that we will go quickly. Anyone in Psalm 128, verse 1? How happy are those who fear the Lord? All who follow his ways. Okay, yours is how happy are those who fear the Lord. Okay, uh, maybe we can hear um, King James. Or I can just tell you, it says blessed, where it says happy there, it says blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. Yeah. Somebody, Psalm 24, 5 verse 14. The Lord confides in those who fear Him. He makes His covenant known to them. Okay, yours says, The Lord confides with those who fear Him. The King James says, The secret okay, is with, God reveals His secret to those who fear Him. Is that what it says? The King James. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. And yes. He will show, show them His covenant. Yes. So the secret of the Lord is with those that fear Him. And Psalm 103. Mine says in Psalms 25, 14. Yes. The Lord confides in those who fear Him. He makes His covenant known to them. Yeah, that is the same as the one of Jeff. Huh? So confiding. What about the simplest one? What does Friendship it? with the Lord is reserved for those who fear Him. With them, He shares the secret of His covenant. 
Yeah, that that one yeah is an extrapolation. Try to make it simpler. Yeah, so we have seen confiding and also revealing the secrets. Yeah, so you confide what secrets to somebody, and you, and that somebody usually is a friend. So you see, all those are captured there. Now let's go to Psalm 103, verse 17 to 18. It says, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto, unto children's children, mm -hmm. to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Yeah, so his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting mm -hmm. with those who fear him. You see that? And uh, we are going very quickly. Proverbs 10:27. Then we will we'll write them in point form, huh? so that we, now we just want to read the scripture, yeah. so that when I tell you, you'll not say I'm telling you my own things. Mine Proverbs 10:27. Mine says in Proverbs 10:27, and I read, "The fear of the Lord adds length of life, adds length to life." But the ears of the wicked are cut short. So he prolongs the days of those who fear him. That's what it says. I hope even the others are. Huh? Then Proverbs fourteen twenty seven. Yeah, Jeff. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To turn one away from the snares of death. Yes. So what does it do? It's a fountain of life. And it helps you to turn away from the snares of death. Or the evil of snares. You see, and uh, so those are positive things. I, we've counted how many, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five positive things about the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There are many you can get from the word of God. But now let's that look at those who, who do not fear the Lord. The wrath of God is upon them. And you can read Ephesians 5, 6. Let's talk about what disobedience Ephesians 5 6 okay yes so you let no one deceive you with many with empty words for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient yeah you remember last week we talked about walking in, in obedience and we saw that disobedience is very costly but obedience is rewarded so here when you walk in his disobedience or when you don't have the fear of the Lord, we are being told about the wrath of God is upon those people. So you can say, if you don't walk in the fear of the Lord, it will take you away from him. You'll be disobedient and his wrath will be upon you. So let me just now go through so that if you are taking notes, you'll see why we should have the fear of the Lord. Now, the first thing we said is that those who fear the Lord, in, in Psalm 128, verse 1, we say, they are blessed, or they are happy, according to David's version. Huh? Yeah, blessed is the one, or is everyone, who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. So, blessing, the blessing of the Lord is upon those who fear him. Then, number two, we saw in Psalm 25, 14, that his secret is with those that fear him. His secret is with those that fear him. Or you can say he confides with those that fear him. It's easier to remember that his secret is with those that fear him. And then, we saw in Psalm 103, verse 17 and 18, that his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting with them that fear him or with those that fear him. His mercy. And his mercy is very important because it is mercy which allows us to continue living even up to now. It's because of his mercy and his grace that he sent Jesus Christ to come and die for us, to save us. Otherwise, we'll all perish. Then, the next one is uh, Psalm, of Proverbs rather, 10.27. He prolongs the days or he gives length of life to those who fear him. So length of days or long life. And we are told that the fear of the Lord now in Proverbs 14, 27 brings a fountain of life to us. It brings confidence and a fountain of life to those that fear God. So and then the, now the, the one which we said is uh, 
the opposite of that is Ephesians 5, 6, that the wrath of God is upon the disobedient. Because you see, we are to walk in the fear of the Lord. Then you may ask me, what is the fear of the Lord? Or what is the fear of God? And uh, we touched on this many months ago. And we saw there are two aspects to the fear of God. Or the fear of the Lord. Or the fear of Yahweh. There are two aspects. It's like a coin. And uh, it's good to always remember both sides. So that we actually live with the fear of the Lord. Or walk in the fear of the Lord. And we are going to read, just to remember, Exodus 20.20. 20. The one who gets there can lift up his hand. So that we are trying to understand what is the fear of the Lord. Yes, Jeff. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Yes. <clears throat> what is this fear? It may be, there are two sides now. You see, what happened in Exodus 19, first, is that God had told Moses, call the people to come to the mountain. They come and witness that I talk to you myself. Because they may think these are your own things. So he said, uh, they come, make a boundary at the bottom of the mountain, so that no one may cross that boundary, and nobody may touch it. Otherwise they will die. Anyone who comes there. Then the Lord came now, in a cloud, in a thick cloud, and uh, he called Moses to go up, but the people were to remain there. And then he spoke to Moses, and the, the earth quaked, the mountain quaked, and they saw the smoke and the fire, and the people were afraid. And then they told Moses when he came down, now, don't be calling us again to be going there to, to witness God speaking to you. You be going to speak to him, and you be coming to tell us what he has said. But we don't want to come near his presence. Then now Moses in Exodus 20:20 20, 20 says, Yes, do not be afraid because God wanted to test you so that fear may be for your face. Okay? So that you may not sin. So the fear of the Lord, you can also add this as, an, as a, another advantage of the fear of the Lord, is that it prevents us from sinning. Mm. You see, when wherever we go, if the fear of the Lord is before us, then we'll be very mindful that we don't sin against God. And in, in terms of, uh, without repeating what we did before, is that there is a fear of his wrath. That's one aspect of the fear of the Lord. His wrath. When people sin against God, they are afraid of the punishment. But then there is a reverence of God. I can give you an example. If Let's say a child has a, a father, very large father. There are two ways. If there are two children, let's look at two children in the family. Yeah, let's call them boys, huh? because boys, let's say, mm. they hang out more with their dads. So uh, these two boys, one of them is uh, is a naughty type. So when when he goes out, he does something, maybe comes his dirty. So maybe when he comes home, he's afraid. That he be beaten because he doubted himself, isn't it? Because he has done the wrong thing. So he comes and hides because he is afraid of punishment. But there's another one. Him is the obedient type, and he does well. He does everything to please his father. Okay. So like in school, he's told, okay, I want you to do well in school. I want you. I bought you all the books, everything. And then maybe he's supposed to be between number one and number five. But he, he becomes number 10. Yet the father has done all this. But he knows his dad never beats him up. He never beats him up. But he just thinks now, what will my dad think of me? That he has done all this for me and I've what? Disappoint, failed. I've disappointed. Maybe became number 6. But the dad is always bragging. Oh, my son is very bright. He's always number 1 in the school. Now he comes number 6. So when he comes home, he actually comes to the dad and tells that dad, I'm sorry. You know, this time I did not do so well. Then the dad asks. He says, I was number six. So he's afraid 
of his dad, but he's not afraid that he'll be beaten. Because you'll not be beaten for coming number six. Eh? But he, he's, he's afraid. The fear is that he has disappointed his father because he upholds that dignity of his father. So th- there is that relationship we have with our Heavenly Father that we know maybe what we ought to do, when we don't do it, we, we have the fear of the Lord in that we have disappointed him. You see? So depending on where you are with God, you may be at the point where you are still at the point where you're fearing his wrath because you sin willfully. See, when you sin willfully, you'll fear his wrath. But when you sin unknowingly or accidentally or without purpose, then your reverence for him is what will cause you now to come and ask for mercy before him. You see, there are those two differences. So it depends where you are with God, your relationship and your fellowship with God. Some people, you'll find that really their day becomes terrible because they did not start the day in worship. They did not have that moment. Maybe they just rushed out to go to work. And all throughout the day they feel guilty. They tell God, I'm sorry, I did not spend time with you. I did not start the day with you. If anything happens which is not right, <laughs> something goes wrong, they say, God, is it because I did not have half an hour with you in the morning? You see? So them, it's like that. Somebody else would ask uh, such a person and say, what is it? The guy says, oh, I, you know, today I did not start with prayer in the morning. And watch. See, what is that? Huh? And myself, I have done that for many years. I'm okay. <laughs> you see? Then somebody else is when maybe they go and sin, maybe they get involved in immorality or something like that, or they steal, they bribe. That's when now they fear God, the wrath of God, you see? So we, we should all have gone beyond the stage where we are fearing the wrath of God because we have sinned willfully to the point where we, we, we feel short of doing or being what God wants us to be. That's the point where we want to be. So where we, because of our reverence for God, will not say the wrong thing. Maybe somebody hurts us, abuses us, but will not respond the way a worldly person will respond because we represent God, because of the fear of God in us. So that is the reverence part. We, re- we reverence or we revere God such that we'll always look at things from his perspective, from his wisdom. That's, and, and in fact, we can read what Job said. Job 28, 28. This is what it says. Yeah. Job 28, 28. NIV. And he said to man, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to shun evil is understanding. Yes. So, you see, there is wisdom and there there is understanding. Huh? And um, so the fear of the Lord is equated with wisdom. And when you depart from evil or you keep God's command, if, you, if you're reading Psalm 111 verse 10, you depart from evil, you keep, you keep his commandments. That is understanding. You see. So, so here, the fear of the Lord, let's see how it applies to the wisest man, Solomon. He is the one who wrote the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And when he wrote the book of Proverbs, that first section is called knowledge, beginning of knowledge. Because in verse 7, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, he says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Huh? You can open there and uh, just confirm what we are saying. Who is there? Jeff. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction. And you remember that the fool is the one who says that there is no God. That is in uh, Psalm 14, verse 1. Yeah, so so here we see, now when you look at uh, Solomon, since we talked about King Solomon, we see what happened to him. He was very wise. Some people say that his wisdom 
the, the one he asked for, there are different types of wisdom. He asked for wisdom that he may judge the people wisely. See? So some people say he was given wisdom to judge. So that if you brought a case before him, like the two mothers eh, who had two babies and one died, one baby died, he was able to judge wisely. And everything that was brought before him, he judged wisely. So some people say maybe he had that wisdom, he did not have the other wisdom or, or the other types of wisdom. To the same measure, that's what somebody said. Eh? But then here we see that I believe he had more than just that wisdom to judge. But the problem that came was compromise, the spirit of compromise. You see, sin is always waiting at the door. And his desire is to have us. Huh? It's like the way God told Cain, sin waits at the door in Genesis. Huh? And his desire is to have him. But he should overcome it. Okay? We should rule over sin. Romans 6.14 Sin shall not have dominion over us. So, in this case, Solomon did not rule over sin. He entertained sin. Because of the flesh, you see, he desired to have many wives, and those many wives, he got them from the pagan community that are around, uh, was surrounding him. So, you see, that's how now, when they came, he entertained their gods, that they, they, he told them, okay, because he loved them, they, they would cry out to him, yeah, they want to uh, worship Molech, uh, Ash, whatever, Ashrat. Yeah, then he would he would allow them to do that. Then, over time, they would welcome him to go and worship their gods with them. And they would tell, it just like Delilah would woo uh, Samson. Huh? So they would cry, you know, ah, we have to go together, oh, okay, today I'll go. Okay, but I'll just go and sit there. Then when they are there, the wife says, let's bend. No, you're not bending. Let's bend. So over time, he started worshipping those other gods. And God was annoyed to please the wives. You remember even Adam ate the, the fruit to please the wife. Okay? So Satan looks at our weakest point. If it's through our relationship with other people, people we love, then he will use that. If it's through alcohol, or something. If it's through money, maybe we love money so much, somebody gives us an offer and we say, just bribe 50k and you just get a million. What is that? Okay. In fact, you go and tithe in your church more. You know, they need that money. They have a project. <laughs> so people justify things and say, like uh, King Saul, he came and justified and said, you see, these things, these animals, we brought them here so that we would sacrifice to our God. Huh? But he was told what? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. So, so the thing is, we should know that uh, it's possible for you to have wisdom, but if you are not observant, okay, if you are not careful, sin can still creep in to your life through compromise, through your weakness. So that's why we are to put on the full armor of God and always to be in fellowship with God. So that when something is coming that is not right, God prompts us through His Spirit. But if we disconnected that fellowship with God, that means when sin comes at us, uh, it may come to us unawares. We may be unaware. You remember the, the children of Israel? When they did not consult God, when the Gibeonites came to make a treaty with them, with Joshua, and they, the Gibeonites say they are from far away and they want to make peace with, with the children of Israel. And in fact, that's around Joshua chapter 9 and verse 10, and, and chapter 10. So, no, that, that one is where, where actually Joshua is fighting for them, where they made the treaty somewhere else. But in Joshua chapter 10, Joshua is actually fighting for the Gibeonites when they were attacked by the Amorites. And they said, how can you allow your servants to be attacked? You see, because they had made that pact, Joshua had to fight for them. And that's the place also where he says, stand, stand still. You see, so people can can kind of uh, find their way to you in a stealthy way without you knowing. That's how sin comes. Yeah. So we should be very careful. We should be watchful. We should, 
we are told to watch and pray. Uh, and the devil is always coming around, roaring, okay? like a lion. Huh? We are also told about the children of Israel when they, they, they lost their fellowship and went to commit adultery, fornication, and worship the gods of the pagans huh? in Numbers. When the, the uh, Balaam, Balaam laid a trap for them. You see? So we have to be very careful. The fear of God is very important. But in, in, in exercising the fear of God, walking in the fear of God. Now let's go to see just one way or so of how can we walk in the fear of God. And um, we remember before we talk about the, the place we are going to read. You remember Joseph. Joseph in Potiphar's house. Joseph was God-fearing. He had the fear of God. And when Potiphar's wife tried to entice him to commit sin, he did not want to, he said to what? To sin against his God and his master. So, so what did he do? When the Potiphar's wife now tried to grab him. He fled. So sometimes our strategy is to flee. We are told to flee from sin. To flee from evil. Some people think they are very strong. And they toy around with, with sin. They go to places where they should not go. They say, now nah, I'm strong, I'm strong. I cannot be tempted like that. I, I, I'm a different type of person. Who do you think I am? Then they go to the wrong place and then the following day they regret and they go to God and say, God, forgive me. So we should be very careful. We should flee from evil. And uh, the reverence for God we've talked about will help us in situations where we are falling short of what he expects from us. But when sin comes to overwhelm us, we should flee from sin. We should not depend on our strength and say, I have the Holy Spirit, whatever they say, whatever they do. Huh? Somebody can go and watch any movie they want, and then they say, I have the Holy Spirit, I'm strong, it will not affect me. Huh? So we have to be very careful. Or somebody can go with the wrong company, maybe he knows these guys, uh, if I go with them, they are going to drink, we are, we'll end up drinking and maybe messing up and doing other things, and they'll still go with those people. Because they believe now, I think where I've reached my Christianity. In fact, I'm going to witness to those people. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you go, you are one, and there are three, and they will tell you, ah, huh? what is this? Yeah. Yeah, what is this? Yeah. Hey. yeah, so so you have to be very careful. We should flee from evil. Let us read uh, Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way. And the perverse mouth I hate. Yeah. Mm. So you see, pride. We have been told about pride and arrogance, a perverse mouth. You see, people, Christians who actually end up sinning like that, are usually proud. Because they say they are, them, they have reached another level. You, have you ever gone to people and you're trying to correct them? I remember one person, I, I not mentioned who, but she, she knows. And uh, the church people, somewhere in Nairobi, eh? the church people, the elders were trying to reason with that pastor there. And then he was telling them, you know, you people, you cannot understand. You cannot understand. Yeah. That person wanted to, to marry somebody who they were not supposed to marry. Yeah? And they tried to take him away from that. He said, you cannot understand. You are below me. You, your understanding is a lower level. That is arrogance. And we are told to depart from that. The fear of the Lord is against those now I'll tell you about uh, a series I used to watch on TV long ago. I think si Simon knows it, about it. I don't know how he knows because he was not there. Was this may maybe the second edition of that series. It was called Star Trek. And uh, we always wanted to. I think it used to come either on Tuesday or Thursday. And everybody in our house would want to watch it. And what we used to see is that there was this uh, starship. Enterprise, it was called. And it would go, they were saying they were going to explore space, look for new life, new signs, signs of life. Huh? But then they would come 
uh, across hostile beings from other places. Eh? So this, this is just science fiction. And uh, Captain Kirk would say, if they come ac across maybe somebody they can conquer, he would say, now, raise the shields, then fire. Okay, So they would raise their shields, their guard, and then they fire. So in this case, is how do we meet sin? So if it's sin which you, you can deal with, you, you raise your shield first, okay, the full armor of God, okay, you put on the full armor of God, and then you use the sword of the Spirit, that's the, the missile or the missile, if you're American. The word of God. Yeah, that you're going to shoot the, the target and destroy the target. But other times, they would come ac across beings with warships, you know, like those that could vanish, okay? the Klingons and so on. Eh? And sometimes they would say, what is the best thing? You know, the Captain Kirk would ask uh, Mr. Spoke. You know, Mr. Spoke was a half-breed between a human being and some, some other beings from other places who were very logical. Mm -hmm. He had no emotions to wonder why you are laughing, why you are yeah. mourning, crying. So, Captain Kirk would say that, Mr. Spock would come and you. What is it? You know, he, he was also proud. He don't ask him for advice, but he would come and ask Mr. Spock, now, what do you think? Then, uh, Mr. Spock would calculate and say, now, in this situation, we are outnumbered, outmaneuvered, outgunned. So, there is no hope for us. So, so now, Captain Kirk would say, all engines, full speed, <laughs> they, would, they would flee, you see. So, so in some situations, there are some sins which, when they come to you, is like there is no way you can overcome them yourself. So, what do you do? You flee very fast. You flee. Don't say, "I think now this one." It's like somebody who is very big, and you know, this guy is a thug, you know, and you you have to pass through that way mm -hmm. to go home. But he's so big, he's so powerful, you cannot fight him. Mm -hmm. So what you do, you flee, you look for another way to get another to your way. house. Okay? So don't tempt the Lord and say, I am with God. Okay? If it's a situation where that's the only way you can go, you can call on God and God will send an angel to fight for you. But don't tempt the Lord. So what have we learned? That in walking in the fear of the Lord or the fear of Yahweh, we need to have reverence for God. And we need to have the fear of his wrath at the same time. That is the other side of the coin. And we need to flee from evil. We should not entertain evil. It's like somebody playing, you know, these people who play with snakes. Yeah, you wonder. And they tell you they are poisonous. They say, I've been playing with these things since I was a child. And then one day you hear they were stuck or they were beaten and they died. You see. So, so we have to be very careful. Don't entertain sin in your life. In any way, in any way, this is a message for today. Don't entertain sin in your life. Flee from sin. Flee from sin. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us of walking in the fear of the Lord, in the fear of Yahweh. <coughs> because that is, the fear of, of God is the beginning of wisdom. We pray, Abba Father, that we, as we walk in that fear, we'll continue to reverence you. And even we are, as we advance in our fellowship with you, we'll still remember that you punish disobedience. And the fear of your wrath will also be with us at all times. We know you are a loving God, you are a loving Father. And even some people have come to say that you are so loving that you cannot punish any of your children. Abba, Father, we pray that you protect us from such lies because you are holy and you've called us to be holy because you are holy. Therefore, grant us the grace, Lord, to walk in that fear. You've given us a record of many who are good people, as we would call good people, who are people who started off with you, well with you, but their end was not so good because they did not have your fear, the fear of the Lord. So we pray, Abba Father, that through your grace and through your mercy, you'll cause us, Lord, to walk in that fear. And you'll actualize those blessings you've talked about, that your blessing is with those 
that fear you, Lord God. Yes, your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting with them that fear you, Lord God. They will be like fountain of life, Abba Father. You reveal to them your secrets, Lord God. You will bless them with long life, Abba Father. Let that be our heritage and the heritage of our children, Lord God, even as we teach them to walk in the fear of the Lord. This we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Dear friend, would you like to invite Jesus into your life? You can say with me this prayer. It's based from Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, and other verses. Say this. Let's say it together. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of the true living God. I believe that you died on the cross to save me. I believe that you rose from the dead and went to be with the Father in heaven. And I welcome you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. If you've said that prayer with me, look for a Bible-believing church that is near you. And may God bless you. You can also reach us at the Facebook page, which is there at the bottom of this page. May God lead you in his paths, in his ways. May God preserve you until the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to take us to be with him forever and ever. Amen.